Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 1st, 2019 edition of the Science Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This month I already talked a couple of times about how domain admin consoles at Registrars, but also locally are again targeted and how for example phishing is being used to get credentials of administrators to then modify these domains. Now, one best practice, of course, is to monitor your own domain for changes. So you do get an alert if an unauthorized change has been made and you can quickly react to this. Today, Xavier posted a diary with a couple of tools that should help you identify these changes early. Now, one nice thing he sort of does here is that he uses a number of tools that you may already have in your environment. For example, Nagios, which is often used to monitor or uptime and such on servers, it can be used to monitor changes. So you could, for example, add some critical host names and check the IP address. Don't forget, for example, name servers here. Don't just uh, monitor your web server. That's probably the easiest one to figure out if it gets modified about MX records and name servers. That's probably the most critical thing to monitor here. But he also has a little shell script that you can use to, for example, check changes to the start of authority record, which would include the serial number and tie this into OSEC. OSEC is often used to monitor, for example, files for changes and collect logs. So a real flexible tool I've seen in a lot of environments and really easy to sort of add a quick check to it in order to get an alert whenever something goes wrong with your domain. All of these techniques, of course, only work if you tie them in with your change control. If you don't do this, then of course, you'll get lots of false positives and you'll stop looking at these alerts. Also, if you're using DNS like for failover, if you're using it for load balancing, then sometimes these records can change quite quickly. So again, you may want to add a uh, rules around this uh, to uh, these warning systems. And remember how early January we had a vulnerability that was being patched in systemd, also journaldy, part of systemd uh, was affected by these vulnerabilities. We do now have a working proof of concept exploit for these vulnerabilities. Capsulate has published a blog post with quite a bit of details in how to actually exploit this particular vulnerability. So if you haven't finished your patching for this vulnerability yet, uh, well, it's time to step it up and make sure all of your systems, your Linux systems that run systemd, which is most modern distributions, will be updated pretty soon. It looks like the most recent update to Windows Defender has had issues with some Windows 10 PCs that also have secure boot enabled. Problem is, uh, if you reboot a system like this, uh, well, it will not boot. The only way you can get the system back is where you first boot it into the BIOS or UFI, then you have to turn off secure boot. And this allows you to boot the system, but then you still have to roll back the change with Windows Defender and restart it. Make sure that you actually run the older version now of a Windows Defender and then you should be able to again enable a secure boot and be back in business. Microsoft has published a knowledge base article about this particular problem and I will link to it in the show notes. And Palo Alto's Unit 42 came across some interesting Mac OS malware that very aggressively goes after cryptocurrency exchange credentials. And in this case, it doesn't just go after stored passwords. Everybody does that, but it also goes after session cookies for these sites. So if you have cookies set for these sites that automatically log you in, that of course is a nice way for an attacker to authenticate to these sites. And again, you'll get access to your data. They also are going after 
SMS messages that are saved in the form of iOS backups on the particular Mac. Now, not too many people necessarily do store their backups for their iPhones on their Mac. Most people, I would think, do that via iCloud. Uh, but again, if you have them on the Mac, they will try to retrieve SMS data most likely to get access to things like second factors and such uh, SMS messages that are being sent by the crypto exchange. It also loads a uh, crypto coin miner. Now, in this case, it's made to look like XMRIC and, uh, you know, which usually is used for Monero. In this case, however, it mines Kodo and other less commonly used cryptocurrency. And I think that also serves as a good reminder that whenever you find a crypto coin miner on a system, assume the system is compromised. Crypto coin miners are often sort of installed on systems that are very easily exploited and you should expect additional malware on them. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again to on Monday. Bye.